we go u.s history folks let's see if we can pull this sucker up all right so last time we were talking about the late 1800s early 1900s so we went what progressive era imperialism uh gilded age economics and reconstruction so we're doing a couple of th other kind of going around the country during the gilded age for a couple of times then we're doing civil war stuff all right uh let me hit presentation here uh and it's picking up right there i wonder if i went up what would happen yes i like it okay so let's talk about the west the west when we're dealing with the west you know probably the number one topic of the west is plains indians They'd lived there forever and ever and ever. It's right there in the middle of the country. It's flat and it's dry. And far forever, everybody just kind of left them to it because it wasn't good farmland, number one, so people really don't want to live there too bad, too much. Number two, they're violent and they're tough and they kill people that move out there. Uh, these are warriors. Uh, the two keys of their culture, uh, the horse that was bought in the Columbian Spanish by the Spanish, which make them more mobile and more warlike permanently nomadic you know they never settle down to become farmers uh they hunt buffalo and the buffalo is the key to all their way of life their food their clothing their weapons uh you know where they live in teepees um so the buffalo is going to be real key for their way of life uh and these are violent folks you know they're warriors so their key virtue is physical courage in battle uh and they the, the phrase is they really give no quarter to their enemies if they catch you you're going to end up dead and it's probably going to take a while all right um so i mean they they treated people that they conquered pretty badly and they were kind of imperialist um so for the longest time especially the comanche down in texas oh my goodness we talked about how rough they were they like to uh they you know they, they like to scout people slowly kill people slowly treat women really really bad um okay so a couple of things going to do them in transcontinental railroad gov american government's going to do them in um transcontinental railroad bringing folks out west on trains the homestead act is the government deciding that this is land that we want that the government wants americans to settle down on and become farmers so they give free land away uh, the homestead act 160 acres to farmers if they gr agree to move out to the west uh kansas nebraska oklahoma the dakotas um the midwest and farm for five years all right um forever and ever and ever and ever and ever i mean the the indians were rough fighters plains indians uh the americans were liars and rough fighters you know we'd make treaties with them then we'd turn around and break the treaty right now hundreds of times u.s government broke treaties saying hey if you'll give us this land we promise will never take any more land and that just kind of happened over and over and over again all right so during these they're called the plains indians war so you have massacres and i'd say the three most famous massacres sand creek right after the civil war uh there's an obvious army officer named shivington that kills a whole bunch of women and children uh about a little bighorn custer's last stand 1876 sitting bull the medicine man sees a vision of soldiers falling out of the sky and crazy horse kills Custer uh, and his unit from the 7th Cavalry. Um, so that's a big victory for the, for the Indians. And the Battle of Wounded Knee is after all the Indians have been defeated and they've been put on uh, the massacre of Wounded Knee, been put on reservations. Uh, and this guy, Wavoka, starts doing the, the ghost dance uh and it's like their book of revelations the end times have come and if you dance good enough the buffalo will come back your ancestors will come back so make indian america great again uh and all the whites will disappear uh and it results in this big massacre where the ghost dancers are supposed to give up their guns and somebody pulls a trigger and the you know the army opens up on them and kills uh lots and lots of men women and children all right at the end of it uh, a lady named Helen Hunt Jackson writes a book called Century of Dishonor uh, about our treatment of the Indians. The Dolls Act gave Indian nuclear families 160 acres to farm, and the Carlisle School tried to turn Indian kids into good Americans, assimilate them. 
uh, into the American way of life. All right, other things in the West. The Cowboys. So you got Cowboys and Indians. Cowboys are guys from Texas taking Longhorns to Kansas on cattle drives to put them on trains uh, to the cities in the East. Uh, Cowboys could be Confederate veterans, African Americans, Mexicans. Probably majority, you know, maybe 50, 25, 25 percent, something like that. Um, it only lasts for 20 years. After 20 years, what, the, the cows have overgrazed. Farmers have put up uh, barbed wire fences and the winters get real bad. So it's a 20-year period, you know, the Old West with uh, cattle towns like Dodge City and, um, you know, ca these cattle drives. All right, the other group of folks in the West were the farmers. They were having a hard time economically. You know, by 1900, less than half of Americans were farmers. And, you know, uh, the weather might get them. There might be a drought. There might be a flood. Insects might get them. The boll weevil. Uh, the price of their crop might go down. Uh, deflation hurt them. Lower, lower prices. Uh, so the farmers formed their own political party called the Populist Party or the People, People's Party. They supported a Democrat for president, William Jennings Bryan, in 1896. He lost to uh, William McKinley, who was a big pro-business uh, Republican. The book Wizard of Oz and movie Wizard of Oz is about this election. Bryan is the lion. Uh, McKinley is the wizard uh, in that book. All right. Gilded Age urbanization. One more on the Gilded Age. People moving to the cities in the late 1800s. All right, who's moving? It's farmers and immigrants. All right, um... Farmers uh, are moving there because they can't make a living, and immigrants are coming, and they're coming, you know, both groups are coming for jobs, uh, you know, modern conveniences, electricity, leisure activities in the city. Same reason people move to Atlanta or big cities today. Uh, you had a group of immigrants called the New Immigrants. They're from Southern and Eastern Europe, not Northern and Western Europe like the Germans and the Irish. So our acronym was J-GRIPS. Jews, Greeks, Russians, Italians, Poles, and Slavs. Um, and the, these immigrants had some struggles. Uh, they were resented for taking jobs, being willing to work for less. Uh, they didn't speak English, and their language wasn't much like English. I mean, Irish immigrants spoke English, and the German language is very similar to the English language, so it was easy for Germans to learn uh, English. Their religion was very different, very formal, pretty Catholic or Orthodox, or Jewish, but not Methodist, Baptist, Tent Revival, uh, Protestant religion. Uh, and they were political radicals because the government wasn't any good where they came from. So they were either uh, anarchists or socialists a lot of times. Um, anarchists screwed up the strikes, uh, and anarchists killed President McKinley, assassinated him in 1901. That's why Teddy Roosevelt became president. All right, other folks in the cities were more welcoming uh, of the um, more welcoming of the immigrants. So, so that a lot of these folks believe in the social gospel. That is, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to help people, regardless where they came from. Circumstances of their birth don't matter. You know, they've got the divine spark in them. They're they're made in the image of God. Uh, the Young Men's Christian Association uh, was one of these groups. The YMCA, we're familiar with that. Uh, the Salvation Army uh, helped poor people in the cities. Probably the most famous welcoming person was James a Jane Adams, who's kind of the mother of social work. Settlement houses were set up uh, all over the big cities all over America. In Chicago, it's called the Whole House. Uh, they would teach English, teach social stage, citizenship, provide daycare. Just kind of look out for these folks and, and help, uh, help, them, help them become part of the United States. Uh, the Statue of Liberty was created, um, given to the United States by France. There's a poem at the base of it, the New Colossus, by Emma Lazarus, arguing that what makes us, what makes America great is our moral power, not like our military power. So it's a new kind of, Colossus is a big, powerful country, so it's a new kind of big, powerful country, a good guy country, uh, that welcomes the unwanted from other countries. All right, and then the leisure activities there uh, in the cities, sports, uh, the circus. Did I put not put circus? Circus, uh, the Wild West show, Buffalo Bills Wild West show reminded them of life in the Old West. Cowboys and Indians, and then sports, basketball, bus, uh, football, 
Baseball, baseball reminded folks of life on the farm. Basketball is good exercise during the wintertime. Inside football gets uh, guys ready to go fight in war. Teddy Roosevelt, big fan of football because Teddy Roosevelt, big fan of war. Okay, next one, Civil War. Um, it, so we're starting at advantages uh, of the two sides of the Civil War. The North had more of everything you need in a war. More money, more guns, more trains, more resources, more people. Anything you need to help fight a war, they got more of it. Uh, the South is better at certain things. They got better generals. Soldiers have grown up shooting guns, and they've got home field advantage. vast majority of the uh, battles are fought in the South. So the Southern strategy is going to be to keep fighting and just hold on. Uh, they're going to get European help, especially British help, if they can win some uh, battles in the North. Um, that's why Lee is going to go up into uh, Antietam and Gettysburg. The Northern strategy called the Anaconda Plans, kind of putting the squeeze on the South. Taking advantage of, you know, uh, their inferior resources. So you're going to capture the Mississippi River and cut the south in half. Uh, keeping uh, Texas Longhorns from uh, Confederate soldiers in Virginia, where a lot of the eastern fighting is. Capture the capital, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, blockade the south. Don't let any uh, supplies get in or cotton get out and free the slaves. <laughs> And slaves would fight, former slaves would fight on the side of the north. And plantation owners would leave the front and go back home to the plantation to get things under under control there. All right, the leaders were important. Abraham Lincoln turned out to be a much better president than Southern President Jefferson Davis. Uh, the generals were good generals. Lee won lots and lots of battles, although he made a couple of mistakes. Grant... Uh, was the general that uh, Lincoln found who was willing to, to fight and lose men in battle even though he kind of had a drinking problem. All right. Uh, there were two theaters in the war. We've got the East and the West. In the East, generally speaking, at the beginning, uh, General Lee's doing well, but you got to do two turning point battles fought in the North. Antietam, where he drops his plans. Gettysburg, where uh, he is responsible for Pickett's charge. That got a lot of, we really kind of lost the battle for the South. All right, by the end of the war, Grant's come over. He's Sherman's kind of his right-hand man, and Sherman's burning Atlanta and marching to the sea. Western battles go a little better for the North from the get-go. Uh, Grant got a surprise attack in a two-day battle called Shiloh, but on day two, he regrouped and won. And then he laid siege to the city of Vicksburg, which was on the Mississippi River, uh, people are having to eat rats. Um, and, uh, when Vicksburg surrendered, um, the North controlled the Mississippi River, uh, and they didn't celebrate July the 4th in Vicksburg for like a hundred years after that. Okay, um, and July the 4th was the day that Lincoln found out that they had surrendered. All right, uh, Lincoln, the, the leader of the Emancipation Proclamation, setting the slaves free in the South. Now, they didn't actually go free because the slave owners didn't recognize Lincoln as their leader, uh, but it's a war measure. Uh, makes it harder for the South to fight uh, and gives some very motivated soldiers to the North uh, to fight. Um, the Gettysburg Address giving meaning to the war. You know, the, the guys died for the American way of life, and they died to make right the original American sin of uh, slavery, making their blood kind of Christ-like blood. All right, uh, and then the surrender comes at to Appomattox. Okay, last one, the causes of the war. So we back up to 1846 to 1848. Remember, Pre President Pope believed in a manifest destiny, that belief the United States was supposed to spread all the way across the continent. Uh, the Mexican-American War ended in the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, that gave the United States uh, the entire Southwest. Okay, um, so it's fighting over the spread of slavery uh, that is a cause, you know, uh, disagreements over that. Slavery, you know, it's better to be a house servant than a field hand, it wasn't either one good. Uh, there weren't many slave revolts because, you know, the leaders would end up dead. So, and runaway slaves would get whipped, so more likely you have passive resistance. Work slow, break the tools, pretend, pretend to be sick. Okay, uh, radical abolitionists. Um, 
uh, and states' writers. So the radicals, you know, John Brown, um, especially William Lloyd Garrison, they don't want to compromise with the South over slavery. Uh, states' rights, folks in the South like John C. Calhoun, they don't want to compromise with the North over slavery. So slavery is kind of falling apart. All right, uh, the Compromise of 1850 is uh, Henry Clay's last attempt to prevent war with compromise. It's got five parts. California is a free state. Utah and New Mexico will decide later. Texas is losing land. Washington, D.C. is not going to allow slave trade, slave au auctions. And probably the most important part of it that makes the North mad, the Fugitive Slave Act, saying when Harriet Tubman brings slaves to the North, you got to send them back. All right, Kansas-Nebraska Act uh, said these two states in the middle of the country would vote on having, whether or not to have slavery, and they're both above the Missouri Compromise line. So it repeals the Missouri Compromise. When they vote, both in Kansas, both sides claim that they win, so you have a civil war there in Kansas before the actual civil war, and John Brown is famous for hacking up pro-slavery men with uh, broadswords there. Potawatomi Massacre, that's called. All right, the Dred Scott case uh, was... Uh, when a slave got taken north, sued for his freedom, and the Supreme Court ruled uh, he wasn't a free citizen. He was pro he was property, and you take your property anywhere. Lincoln ran, got mad about uh, the Kansas-Nebraska Act and the Dred Scott case especially, and so he ran for a Senate uh, in Illinois in 1858, uh, and he argued that there was no way to, to limit slavery in that uh, Senate election. He lost to Stephen Douglas. Uh, for senator, but he made a name for himself. That's how he gets elected president. 1859, John Brown from, you know, we last saw him in Kansas hacking people up, raised the arsenal at Harper's Ferry, Western Virginia, to try to start a slave rebellion. Uh, he gets caught, doesn't work, he gets caught and he gets hung. He's seen as a martyr in the North and a terrorist in the South. Lincoln, who's anti-slavery, opposes the spread of slavery, um, gets elected in 1860 in the South secedes right away, seven southern states. South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas. Um, and when Lincoln becomes president, fighting breaks out uh, at Fort Sumter, South Carolina. What do you think? I think that lasted 24 minutes. Let's see.